I love when Bugsy Siegel says to Dragner, the alleged boss of the L.A. mob, you rob from me? Get on your knees and bark like the dog that you are. It is Monday, Mob Movie Monday. We have a great one for you today. One of my favorites. But first, hope everybody had a great weekend. Watch the football playoff games, getting close to the Super Bowl. Even through this COVID uh, you know, pandemic that we have, we still have football. And I know I enjoy it. I know many of you do. So I uh, hope everything else is good. Big week coming up. We got the inauguration coming up on the, the 22nd. And uh, whatever your feelings are, all I can tell you is it's going to happen and, uh, you know, I always say things that are not in our control, uh, we don't get upset about. For those of you that might be upset, I want all the tensions to go down and just let this play out the way it should be. Just worry about the things that you can control in your life. So uh, with those words of wisdom, uh, let's get, it, get on to today. And today, one of my favorite films is the movie Bugsy. 1991, it was released. And uh, Warren Beatty, I thought, was terrific as uh, Bugsy Siegel. And Ed Benning was great. Uh, ben Kingsley played Meyer Lansky. He was terrific. Harvey Keitel as Mickey Cohen. The whole cast was great. But it was really a good movie. And, uh, and Ed Benning and um, uh, Warren Beatty stole the show. They were terrific. So let's get into that a little bit now. As far as the accuracy of the movie, there's a lot left out. I'm going to fill some of that in. And then we're going to go to some of my favorite scenes, scenes that stood out to me in the movie. All the acting was terrific. Every scene was great, but some of them just stood out better than the others. Let me give you a little background on Bugsy Siegel. And uh, I, I spoke about him in another video about the Jewish mob. And uh, so you can refer back to that. But let me give you a little bit more about Bugsy, because the movie didn't tell you a lot of what Bugsy's life was all about. Bugsy, uh, he was born in 1906. And he was born in uh, Brooklyn in the Williamsburg section. Now, interesting. My father was born in 1960, 1917, uh, 11 years later, also Williamsburg Green uh, Greenpoint section. And my father had told me, as you know, my father passed away last year at the age of 103. But my father told me among the many people that he did meet, he did meet Bugsy Siegel. And uh, why I believe that to be true, first of all, my dad, you know, sometimes he embellished things, but a lot of times uh, he told me, uh, you know, true events that occurred. And uh, my grandfather, who settled in Greenpoint back in the early, early uh, I think, 1905, something like that, he had a bakery um, on the corner of Jackson and Leonard Street. A lot of the guys around at that time used to go in. My grandfather was uh, very well respected. They used to go in and he used to hang out. And Bugsy Siegel was one of them, according to my dad. My dad did have the opportunity to meet him, told me a few little things about him. He was young then, so it wasn't like, uh, you know, he knew him well or got involved in any way. But he did meet him. He met Meyer Lansky. He met a lot of guys back then. So very interesting. But he did come out of Williamsburg, uh, Brooklyn section. From there, he went into Manhattan. He got involved with Meyer Lansky. They cooked, hooked up, and they had kind of a gang together. They were doing some hijacking and things like that. And uh, eventually, they met up with Lucky Luciano. And uh, again, just to run through this briefly, it was Maya Lansky and uh, Bugsy Siegel that originally started Murder Incorporated. Uh, it wasn't called that back then, but they started this, you know, murder for hire stuff. And uh, Lansky would actually kind of lend Bugsy Siegel out uh, to do hits uh, for other people, other groups. They got close with Luciano. They, they formed a bond. I told you the Jewish mob guys at the time, they were strong guys. A lot of them were business guys, powerful guys. And uh, so they formed that kind of an alliance. And it was a strong alliance between Luciano and a couple of the guys back then, Maya Lansky, Bugsy Siegel was one of them, a bunch of the guys. And um, when Bugsy finally, um, you know, left Murder Incorporated, he left it up to Louis uh, Bookwalter, uh, Lepke and uh, a few of those guys. I talked about that. We're not going to get into it again. But uh, from that part, uh, Bugsy Siegel goes out to California 
And the reason he really went out there was because of the gambling business. He was big into gambling. After Prohibition, which he was involved in, he went out and started to get involved in gambling business out in California. He set up the rackets out there. So, uh, and now we'll get into the story a little bit. I'll tell you some of the scenes because in some of those scenes, we talk about his gambling operation, obviously Vegas, the whole bit. But uh, I got to tell you my favorite scene. I'm going to start out with this because uh, I just love the scene. When Bugsy goes out there, and this is true, you know, this is true, he sees, uh, you know, a guy by the name of Dragner, who was the alleged boss of the L.A. crew, the L.A. family at that time. They weren't really a family. There was a mob out there, and Dragner was the, the boss. And so uh, Luciano sends Bugsy Siegel out there, Mylansky, they send him out to take over uh, the gambling operation out there. And uh, he first meets up with Mickey Cohen. Mickey Cohen was played brilliantly by Harvey Keitel. Mickey Cohen is known to be like a loose cannon. He worked along with Dragna at the time. And there was a great scene there where, um, you know, Bugsy Siegel uh, confronts uh, Mickey Cohen about the gambling business. And Mickey gets in his face and, and Bugsy loves it. And they kind of, he kind of takes Mickey under his wing. Well, uh, they take over the uh, gambling operation really from Dragna. And there comes a point where Dragna uh, steals $14,000 from, um, uh, from Warren Beatty, from Bugsy. And there's a great scene where uh, Bugsy uh, just puts Dragna in his place, has him, has him rolling around on the floor like a dog and barking. And it's, it's a brilliant scene. Got to watch it. And it shows you how crazy uh, Bugsy Siegel was. And by the way, he hated that name. Everybody knows that. He hated to be called Bugsy, but he was a loose cannon. You know, and he was a guy of substance and a guy that I've heard others talk about. He was the real deal when it comes to, you know, his ability to uh, to do hits and stuff like that. He was a real deal. But um, it was a great scene. You got to see it. The confrontation with Mickey Cohen, uh, you got to watch that scene. It was brilliant. And uh, like I said, he's brilliant all the way through. Another scene that I, I thought was, uh, was great uh, was when he had to kill his, uh, a good friend of his, a guy by the name of Greenberg, uh, who uh, the rest of the mob guys, Lansky, they believed that he was going to become an informant. And so uh, they give Siegel the job of killing him. And uh, he's in the car with his girlfriend, Virginia Hill, and Greenberg at the time, and they take a walk, and uh, Bugsy does the hit and comes back to the car, and Ed Benick says, where's Greenberg? Good scene, got to watch it. And uh, I don't know if that's how it actually happened. Again, they always take dramatic liberty in these films, but... Uh, uh, that did occur. And uh, before I get to the rest of that, let's talk about his relationship, uh, Bugsy's relationship with Virginia Hill. Annette Benning was brilliant in this role. She, uh, you know, uh, it was funny, but uh, some of you know that uh, I produced a, uh, a show in Vegas. It was called A Mob Story. And this one's a real hit. And my daughter played the role of Virginia Hill. And she was brilliant in that role. So we, we got into, you know, really knowing the character of Virginia Hill. But anyway, she was uh, very combative. She was certainly a match for Bugsy Siegel. They have some competition, uh, confrontation. She throws things at him. She screams at him. He chases her around. He was very much in love with her. But uh, the relationship uh, was kind of a thread throughout the film. And it was, it was greatly done. And uh, yeah, if I keep seeing the praises, because I love the film, you know, I'm, I'm honest with you. And um, so he kills Greenberg and uh, he eventually gets indicted for that. They arrest him for it and uh, in L.A. and they charge him with the murder of Greenberg. He gets acquitted. They didn't convict him on it. Um, I believe they only had one witness and that witness uh, eventually didn't want to testify. But uh, there is a scene in there when Bugsy is in the jail cell and he's living like a king in there. And uh, that actually did happen. Now, I, have a, I had a close friend who was a higher up in the Beverly Hills Police Department. As a matter of fact, he could have been chief of the department. He's a good friend, brother in Christ, good friend. You know, we're friends. And, um, you know, he had given me some insight into the investigation of Bugsy Siegel. And that jail scene was pretty accurate. They treated him like a king in there. He had his own telephone. He had his own food. And, uh, you know, people resented that. But that scene that you see in there and, uh, was very realistic. It was real. Another scene that was real. He did uh, sit down with a countess. I think he had a relationship, maybe a, uh, an affair with her. And through this countess, he met Benito Mussolini. 
And for some reason, you know, he wanted to kill Mussolini. It was kind of a passion of his. He even spoke to Maya Lansky about it. He met her through the Countess. So that's depicted in the movie. And it is a, a, a true scene that happened there. He never got to kill Mussolini. He got involved with other things. And obviously that didn't happen. So he's running his gambling operation in California. And he decides to take a trip out to the desert. And the way it's depicted in the movie is not really accurate, that he just happened to see this open space and it came to him like, you know, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, came out of the sky that, hey, I want to build a casino here. Didn't really happen that way. He connected with the owner of the Flamingo that was trying to get it built. And he then associated, it was already in progress. He associated with the owner. He took a partnership. He eventually took over the whole, um, you know, uh, hotel. And he, in turn, you know, got in contact with Lansky and the guys back uh, east and said, I want to build this hotel. It would be an extension of his gambling operation in California. That's how it really went down. And so Bugsy got involved. He did get infatuated, from what I understand. He's, there was a dream of his to build this amazing casino hotel. He thought he could make it work because uh, while he was in California, um, he really did get involved with a lot of celebrities there, some people in the studios, and he had this idea of bringing celebrities out to California and have them appear on stage, have them go there and would attract other people. So all of that is true. George Raft was one of the guys that he was involved with, and uh, I even didn't believe he met Sinatra, young Sinatra at the time, but all of that is true, and it's depicted, you know, in a way in the film, so it's true. Um, they ran into a lot of problems. They went over budget in building the hotel. That's all true. Um, they finally opened the hotel, uh, I think it was Christmas in, uh, in 1946. It was raining that night. That's shown in the film. That is a true scene. And um, the hotel wasn't totally completed yet. He had the casino, a couple of the restaurants, I believe, done. Maybe the, uh, you, you know, the uh, room where they were going to show some of the uh, uh, talent and entertainment there. But uh, that night was a failure. The celebrities that were supposed to show up didn't show up. True story. And uh, it was a failure. He had to, you know, let some people go. And um, it, it wasn't a good opening. He continued with it. In the film, it shows that, you know, he was murdered shortly after that. It's not true. He continued with it, and a hotel did open up again about a year later, and it was a successful opening. For some reason, though, um, things were getting kind of out of control with him, not only as a result of the hotel. I think what they tried to show in the movie is that he got killed because of the hotel. That wasn't the whole story. He really got killed because he was getting out of control. He was kind of, from the way I understand, disrespecting guys back east, wasn't given the right count in his gambling business. Uh, of course, they were still upset with the, uh, what was going on with the hotel. They had lost a lot of money, even though it became a huge success later on. And he was kind of digging his own grave. I think it was back in 1946, uh, Luciano had been exiled, as you know, uh, in the United States to Sicily. And they had kind of a, a meeting with all of the guys in Cuba in 1946. And it was during that time, allegedly, allegedly, I don't have any proof of this, and neither does anybody else, a lot of hearsay about it. I've heard about it, but I don't say things are true unless I know it for a fact. But allegedly, it was then that they decided, and Luciano gave the order for Bugsy Siegel to be killed. Meyer Lansky, um, you know, went along with it. He had to. Even though Bugsy, Bugsy was a, a lifelong friend, I don't think he wanted to do it. According to the film, he tried to save his life a few times. We don't know if that's true or not, and it's depicted that way in the film, but I can tell you for a fact, we don't know if that's true or not. I know there was some guy uh, recently that stated that a, a guy by the name of Carbo uh, was the shooter. I don't think we know that for a fact either. Again, it's speculation. It's like the Hoffa killing. Oh, I know who killed Hoffa. Nobody knows who really who killed Hoffa. But anyway, um, so uh, the way the film goes, um, after that uh, disastrous opening of the hotel, um, he gets shot. He goes to Beverly Hills. He was actually in Annette Benning's house, <laughs> Virginia Hills house. And uh, a sharpshooter from outside uh, shoots through the window First hits him in the head, and then a bunch of shots get him, and he's dead. He's dead on the spot, right? That's how it's depicted in the film. It's a great scene. It's a graphic scene, but it's, it's a great scene the way it was filmed. Now, my friend in the Beverly Hills Police Department uh, actually took me into the department one time and showed me some memorabilia. I saw, I think, the, uh, the driver's license and a few of the things that uh, Bugsy had on him the night he was killed. The murder has never been solved. 
They blame it on the mob, of course. There was another theory that um, he might have got killed by a guy who um, was standing up for uh, the wife of somebody that um, uh, Siegel was allegedly going to kill. The wife went and complained about it, and this guy allegedly shot uh, Bugsy as a result of that. Two different theories. I can tell you that the murder has never been solved. As far as law enforcement is concerned, it's still a cold case. It's open. I don't think they're pursuing it. They'll never find out now. It's a long time. But uh, the way it's depicted in the film, he got killed as a result of the failure of the Flamingo Hotel. But again, we don't know that that's the truth or not. But all in all, it was a great, great uh, movie. Again, watch the relationship throughout. It's a great thread through the film uh, between Bugsy and Virginia Hill. Uh, acted brilliantly. Mickey Cohen, Harvey Keitel did a great job. He was a guy out here. You all heard of Mickey Cohen, I'm sure. He did work with Dragna first, and then he worked with Bugsy, uh, another Jewish guy. You know, don't ever sell these Jewish guys short. They were sm uh, short. They were smart, and uh, and they were tough guys too. You know, know that. And I know that firsthand. I heard it for you know from a lot of people, and I met with them. You know, we were all around a lot of the Jewish guys, so that's that's no joke, and it's depicted well. So um, you know, that's it. Great film. And by the way, uh, after Bugsy got killed, um, it shows that uh, you know two guys that were around Maya Lansky and around Bugsy go into the hotel and they tell Virginia Hill, who's there, we're taking over. Well, I don't know if it exactly happened that way, but a guy by the name of Mo Sedway and Gus Greenbaum. They were affiliates to Maya Lansky and the guys back east, and they actually took over management of the hotel and made it a huge success. And the Flamingo was really the first major hotel that, uh, that had success there in, in Vegas and had a lot to do with Vegas being built. So it wasn't so much Bugsy Siegel's vision, the way it's seen in the movie, but it was Bugsy's idea to get involved in the Flamingo. But I'll tell you what drew people to Vegas. When Bugsy Siegel was murdered, uh, a photo of him was, his body, you know, was all over the news, in Vegas, all over the country, all over the world. And that actually drew people uh, to Las Vegas. They wanted to see the Flamingo. You know, the story was about the hotel and about Bugsy. And that photo alone and Bugsy Siegel's death had a lot to do with building Las Vegas and drawing people there at that time. So uh, to me, that was very interesting. I found that out later on, but uh, very, very interesting. So that's it. Great movie, Bugsy, 1991. I totally recommend that you watch it. Look for all of these scenes that I just uh, talked about. Always take dramatic liberty, obviously. The, the uh, studios do, producers do when they make this film. But this one went, was, uh, they did a great job with it. So that's it for today. Another Mob Movie Monday down the drain. We got The Departed coming up soon. A lot of others that we have on tap. Uh, I know that you're going to enjoy uh, what do I always say? You know, subscribe. We're over 350,000. You people are just wonderful. We appreciate so much that you enjoy the content and that, you know, a lot of subscribers are coming on board. We like that very much. Thank you very much for that. Uh, MichaelFrancis.com, our community. I had a great Zoom call today with a whole bunch of my followers. You got to see the questions that are being asked now. So deep, how the community is getting involved, the people that we're helping and counseling, how people are counseling one another. It's a great resource, especially through these pandemic times when people are struggling. So you want some business concept ideas? I'm your guy. Give us a holler. So that's it for today. We will see you the next time. What do I always say? Be safe, be healthy, God bless, and I will see you next time.